All right, in this video lecture, I'm going to cover 6.5 part one, molecular bio, uh, sorry, pfft, molecular geometry, uh, basically describing the shape of molecules through the um, VSEPR theory, which stands for valence shell uh, electron pair repulsion. And then, um, I'm going to give you some hints to help you predict the shapes of molecules or polyatomic ions. And then in a different lecture, I will cover some more um, molecular forces. But let's get to it. So properties of molecules do depend on the type of bond, you know, metallic, ionic, covalent, and shape, which means geometry. And chemical formulas can reveal a little, uh, very little about the polarity and shapes. And so in comes the Vesper theory where uh, we're basically looking at sets of valence level electrons surrounding the atom and you know these valence electrons want to be orientated as far apart as possible because of the repulsion force forces so vesper stands for that valence shell electron pair repulsion what's the maximum degree of distance that we can have these valence electrons away from each other um, as we arrange the atoms and you know their bonds so I'm going to go through the shapes of the Vesper theory. And the first one is pretty simple. It's a linear shape. And if you co come across a compound that just has two different types of atoms or elements, you know, like uh, H2, and I, I guess I shouldn't say two, uh, two different, you know, because whatever. If you have something that has two atoms or two elements, then it's going to be linear. Okay, so hydrogen gas, H2, hydrochloric uh, acid or hydrogen chloride, uh, HCl and this you know this is also linear okay so it could be a b2 um, which means we have one type of element and then a different element but there's two of them so two atoms are bonded to the central atom um, and there are no lone pairs on the central atom that means that there's no dots here or here and if that is the case uh, then you will also have a linear shape so you can see how um, a linear shape can come about in two ways, just two atoms or an AB2 uh, formation, okay? Uh, another shape for Vesper theory is called the trigonal planar, okay? And this uh, format is an AB3. Basically, we have three atoms bonded to a central atom, and again, no lone pairs on the central atom. Okay, so no dots. And these three um, AB bonds, okay, the three AB bonds, they stay furthest apart um, uh, at 120 degree angles. So I think with this, I like usually um, have you guys follow along and model these with the ball and stick models. Um, but you know, since you're at home watching this, um, so. Here's my central atom, no lone pairs, and then I have three off. Uh, as you can see that this is 120 degrees. This is the maximum distance uh, for these valence electrons to be away from these valence electrons, okay? Aluminum chloride, same thing. So we draw the Lewis structure like this, but in reality, the shape of it is like this. Okay, another shape is bent or angular, and that can come about in a few different ways. An AB, to E. Now this E means a lone pair on the central atom. Okay, so I have two elements bonded to A, and on A I have at least one lone pair. So to give you an example, here's one. Okay, oxygen, nitrogen, fluoride. Okay, so Nitrogen is my central atom because it can form three bonds. It has the lowest electronegativity. I have fluorine off to one side and then a double bond with oxygen. Okay, and because of this lone pair, it kind of it kind of acts like a separate bond. So we still have 120 degrees, but there's nothing bonded here. It's just those lone pair electrons. Um, so this is 120 degrees, and then this would be uh, 240. Okay. Water is another example of a bent. Um, bent shape and it's bent comes about by this format AB2 but then two lone pairs on the central atom and 
in this case it is on oxygen there are my two lone pairs now we don't have the 120 we have a 104.5 Okay, uh, another shape for the Vesper theory is tetrahedral, and uh, this one's pretty easy to recognize. It's an AB4. You have four atoms bonded to the central, so methane gas, CH4, okay, um, and you can kind of see it. It's kind of like a pyramid shape in a way. Uh, another shape for the Vesper theory is trigonal pyramidal and its format is an AB3E. So that means we have three atoms bonded to the central atom and then a lone pair on that central atom. And um, a great example is uh, NH3. We have an uh, unshared pair on nitrogen that, and it kind of takes the tetrahedral shape, okay? It's just, there's just no top. So that lone pair is, is at the top, but the, the tripod on the bottom is very similar to the bottom part of the tetrahedral. It's just nothing bonded to the top. That's where the lone pair sits. So it's like a, a tripod. Okay. Trigonal bipyramidal, AB5. This is part of our extended octet, where you have five atoms bonded to the central, and there are no lone pairs. And you can see we have uh, this kind of trigonal um, planar uh, here, and then a top and a bottom. And then finally, uh, the octahedral, again, a part of the extended octet, AB6. Uh, so six atoms bond to central, there's no lone pairs. And this time we have four coming out at 90 degrees. And then uh, one at the top, one at the bottom again, 90 degrees. Now we can't make this with the ball and stick. And uh, there is one ball, but there's very few of them out there where we can make the trigonal bipyramidal. All right, so I have this handy dandy table that I pass out to everybody, and if you're at home, I would recommend screenshotting this uh, screen. Um, so if you are, you know, you get the formula, okay, and um, you draw the Lewis structure, from the Lewis structure, you can figure out the shape of it, okay? And that's what you're gonna be doing the next couple days with the Vesper lab, is I will give you the formula and then from the formula, you'll figure out how many valence electrons you have, and you'll draw that Lewis structure. And then from the Lewis structure, um, you can figure out the molecular shape. So here I have Be2. Uh, um, this is how the table works. How many atoms are bonded to the central atom? Okay, two. Um, are there any lone pairs? No. So then it's linear. Okay. Uh, so you ask yourself, how many atoms are bonded to the central atom? and then how many lone pairs of the electrons on the central atom. This is the central atom. And just using this handy dandy table, you can figure out the shape of um, that molecule. So I got another visual concept. The atoms attached to a central atom spread out from each other as much as possible. But how does this model explain the geometries of molecules with non-bonding electron pairs? The nitrogen atom in an ammonium molecule has one non-bonding pair of electrons. These electrons also repel the adjacent atoms and do so even more strongly. The atoms, therefore, are pushed closer to one another. We can predict the geometries of molecules by considering the locations of all the electron pairs in the valence shell. Phosphorus trichloride, for example, is made up of a central phosphorus atom attached to three chlorine atoms by single bonds. Consulting the periodic table, we see that phosphorus has two valence electrons in s orbitals and three valence electrons in p orbitals. The chlorine atoms all have seven valence electrons, one empty spot in one of their p orbitals. So each of the single p orbitals in phosphorus must be bonded with the single p orbitals in chlorine, leaving a lone pair of electrons on one side of phosphorus. According to our model, the geometry of phosphorus trichloride, therefore, is not trigonal planar, but rather trigonal pyramidal, with the chlorine atoms bent away from the lone electron pair. All right. Um, so, for example, let's just say that you have these problems, okay? And, and this is what we would do in class is, um, you know, I'd model this for you. So, figure out how many valence electrons we have. Carbon's got four, 
oxygen has two, I have two oxygens at six apiece. Sorry, I said that wrong. Two times six is 12 plus four is 16 valence electrons, right? So then when I draw this, uh, carbon's gonna be my central. I got my two oxygens on either side and I fill in my lone pairs and then pray that we have um, 16 and that the octets are met. All right, everyone's got an octet. Let's see if I have 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Wow, really overshot that. Uh, so then we will erase a lone pair between two of them and form a double bond. Okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Overshot again, and I like symmetry, and it's just best if you... Um, from the other oxygen. Oxygen can form three bonds, but um, it tends to want to. Otherwise, we violate the octet over here. Anyways, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right, this is what it looks like. So then with your model, my arrow here, uh, black is usually carbon, okay? And then we have two of these, okay? And you'll notice that with your molecular, you know, um, molecular uh, pegs, no, there's, there's no two holes right next to each other. So then you'll have to use springs. And you'll have a spring like this, and a spring like this, and a spring like this, and a spring like this to form that linear shape. Because uh, you can't do it with just plain wooden pegs. Wooden pegs denote single bonds. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's, oh, so then how do I know it's linear? Sorry. So I have two atoms bonded to the central, and I have zero lone pairs, so I would convert to this table. Two atoms bonded to the central atom, and zero lone pairs. That's why it's linear. Sorry, I jumped the gun. I just have this memorized. All right, let's try this one, and I'll revert back to the table. So chlorine has seven valence electrons, um, plus the three oxygens at six apiece. And because I see that this has a negative charge, I'm going to add one, because it um, has picked up an electron. 18 plus 8 is 26. Okay. Uh, so, do oxygen. One of the oxygens in the middle. And I'm just going to do a chain of oxygens and see what happens. <sighs> Something tells me that off here. Well, we'll find out, huh? Learn from the mistakes. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six. Hey, it worked. And all the octets are achieved. And why do I get the feeling that this is just a really bad example? Why did I have this example? Wow, this is embarrassing because it kind of, I feel like I need to shift an oxygen over. Let's just, I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna redraw it. I'm sorry, it's been a year since I've done this. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. I think this is what we want. This is what we want. Because then I can use the table. Yeah, forget this. Forget the U. Okay, anyways. Um, so here we have it. Uh, everyone's got an octet. <sighs> yeah, so I got three bonded to the central with a lone pair. So three, one. So I find my three to one. Here it is. And I would have a trigonal pyramidal. Okay, that's the only three, one. Yeah, I don't know why I had a brain fart there. Okay, so anyways, that's that. Uh, so in the next couple days, we're gonna be doing the Vesper model lab.